Ecclesiastics chapter 3. And the word of God says, To everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. And it's amazing because here in Ecclesiastics, it's, it's, it's talking about for everything, there is a season. Amen. What you're going through this evening or in this hour could very well be a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen. So what God does is he allows us to go through seasons and times to accomplish his purpose. See, we serve a intentional God. We serve a God of purpose. And listen to this. It says here, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up which was planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to loose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And it's interesting that here the word of God says, for every purpose, there is a season. And I believe here the word of God is talking about the shift. See, in this world, God will bring a shift in your life. You know, uh, reminiscing we had an event um, in 2020. It was called it was called uh, 2020 Shift, Amen. And it was interesting because I believe it was a prophetic utterance that was coming out. And this was before you know we found out about uh, the virus, you know, COVID 19 and all that. But it was a prophetic utterance that God was bringing out. I'm not saying that I'm a prophet but what i'm saying is that god does speak through his word and i believe that we prophesy in part but i believe that god was speaking to his kingdom speaking to this world not just through us but through many other people that he was going to bring a shift and what a shift is a shift is a change amen usually a shift is a change that changes your life but it also changes the world. And here it's talking about the shift. And it's interesting that the word of God says there's a time to be born. Did you know that when you were born, God was bringing a shift? See, you have so much purpose in your life that God created you to bring a shift. Amen? Amen. And then it also says, and a time to die. And when someone dies, God is also bringing a shift. Amen. He's bringing a change that's going to change many lives or change the world. Amen. So let's go ahead and go to, I wrote my notes here. Let me just pull them up really quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
God is good. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, and we're talking about the shift. Amen? Verse 21, the word of God says, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removes kings and he set it up kings. He removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that have no understanding. Amen. But it's God who changes the times. And it's God who brings in the new seasons. Amen. And here I believe it's not talking about the weather. It's not talking about winter or fall. It's talking about the changes of life. Amen. It's talking about when God does something, he's bringing a shift. Amen. We just read right now on the word of God, there's a time for everything. Amen. And whenever you look at the word, uh, it says there's a time to live and there's a time to die. But when you study that, it's because God is bringing a season and he's bringing a shift. What you're going through is a season and there is a reason for that season because God has a purpose for your life. Amen. Let's continue in the word. It's in Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and here God brings a shift. He brings a change in the life of Joshua but also in the whole tribe of Israel. Amen. And let's go ahead and get into the word. It says here in Joshua chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, you got to understand that Joshua was the minister of Moses, that Moses was a spiritual parent to Joshua that Moses poured into Joshua's life that Moses invested in Joshua that Moses and Joshua had a great relationship amen but listen to what happens it says here in verse 2 it says Moses my servant is dead now therefore Arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And here his loved one, amen, dies. Moses dies and Joshua has this love uh, uh, for Moses. Moses was his leader. Moses was his spiritual father and the man of God dies but the death of Moses represents a shift it represents a season that God now is commanding Joshua to take on the mission to take on the mantle to take on the mandate amen and many people you know we must understand this because when we think about the shift when God brings down a king and he raises up another king some people all they think about is the title or they think about the position that you know I now I have this title and I have this position of greatness amen but we got to remember that you know what it's not about titles it's not about that amen it's about purpose see when God calls us he calls us not so much to take on the title, but he calls us to take on the responsibility. Amen. And here God begins to call Joshua. And it's not necessary, necessary that he gives him Moses' title. He gives him Moses' responsibilities. Amen. He gives him 
the task and the mission that Moses had. Amen. And it says here in verse 3, Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall no any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. But listen to this. This is the commandment. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So here he gives him the responsibility. He gives him the mission. And what was the mission? Was for him to be a blessing to the kingdom. To be a blessing to God's people. To, to divide the inheritance of the land unto God's people. Amen. And God commands Joshua to be strong and courageous because Joshua was going through a shift. He was going through a change. He lost his spiritual father. Amen. And he was now called to take on the responsibility. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou may, mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but be thou, but, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And he was telling him, if you don't know where to go, be in the word. Amen. Get in the word. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Amen. If you're going through some confusion today, if you don't know what's going on in your life, amen. If you can't understand the shift, amen. You need to get into the word of God because God will give you revelation. Amen. He will speak to your life and he, ta and he tells he tells a Joshua to stay in the word because if he stays in the word, he will remain encouraged. He will remain enlightened. He will remain empowered. Amen. He will, he, he, he will know what's going on. Amen. And verse 9 says, have I not commanded you be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord God is with you, whatsoever thou shalt go. Amen. And whenever God brings a shift, we do not need to be afraid. Amen. You know, especially in this hour, in this time that we're living in, you know, it breaks my heart that many people are passing away. Amen. And we send our prayers, amen. We send our uh, condolences, amen. Because that's not an easy thing to go through. But I believe with all my heart is that God, whenever that, that happens, whenever we experience a death from a loved one, whenever we lose a loved one, God could very well be bringing a shift. And this is what I'm saying, is that God calls, he calls his people, he calls us to rise up. He calls us to take on the responsibility. He calls us to take on the assignment, amen? And listen, uh, listen, listen to these points I'm going to bring out, amen? Is that when God called Joshua, he called him to take the responsibility that Moses had. And also, you know, you, you read the book of Ruth, amen, and you see how Naomi and Ruth lost their loved ones. 
That was God bringing a shift in their life. But Naomi took on the responsibility of watching over Ruth. Amen. And, re and in return, Ruth took the responsibility to watch over Naomi. Uh, when you uh, study about uh, the prophet Samuel, amen, when the prophet Eli died, God brought a shift, and you see that it was the prophet Samuel, the prophet Samuel, that took over the prophetic ministry, amen? He took on the responsibility. God brought a shift. When you see the prophet Elijah, when God took Elijah, it was his disciple Elijah that took on the responsibility. When King David passed, amen, it was Solomon that took on the responsibility. When Jesus ascended into heaven, it was Peter that became the pastor and the leader of the disciples. He took on the responsibility, amen. When Jesus was on the cross dying, amen, Jesus saw John and he and he and, and John and Mary were there and he told John, John, this is your mother and mother, this is your son. And what was he doing? He was passing on the responsibility to John. It was John that was going to now watch over his mother. Amen. See, whenever God brings a shift, he calls us to be strong and courageous amen see there's a time and a season for everything amen and i believe that god we serve the god of the shift amen and i believe that god is calling many people out there to rise up first of all we got to understand that when we're born into this world we're born to accomplish a purpose and that purpose is his purpose, God's purpose. When God called you, amen, God called you for his own purpose, amen. He has a plan for you are God's design. He has a purpose for your life and a plan for your life. But many times we go through hardships, but God is calling us to finish the race. He's calling us to finish the course because he's called us to leave a legacy. Amen. We are part of the shift. Uh, see, when God calls you, he's calling you to pass the baton to the next generation. But many of us are not even running. Hello. Many of us are just sitting back on our lazy boy. Amen. We're just chilling. Amen. We're just, you know, relaxing. But let me just you know, remind us is that God has called you for a purpose, amen. You've been created for his purpose and we were created to do a work for God. So you need to know that you are a work, amen, that you are God's building. God is building you, but also he has created you to do a work. If you're breathing tonight, it's because you were born to do a work, amen. See, Jesus knew that he was born to do a work for the Father, amen. See, we need to understand that God has called us to be about the Father's business. When you read the word of God and it says the harvest is great, but the labors are few. When you look that up in the Greek, it's talking about businessmen. See, it grieves my soul when we have a misperception of how God wants us to be. God doesn't want us to be mediocre. God doesn't want us to be soft, amen? God wants us to be strong and courageous. And if you're going to take on the mandate of God, if you're going to take on the shift, if you're going to take on the responsibility, then we need to put in work, amen? We need to be violent. And I'm not talking about hurting people. I'm talking about when we go through the battles we should not give up amen the word of god says a just man falls seven times but he rises up again amen i don't know what you've been going through all week or all month amen but it's a season and there's a reason but god is calling you to rise up again to get up it doesn't matter how many times you fall it matters how many times you 
get back up. It's time to get back up and understand that you were created to do a work for God, that God has put you in this earth to set an example. And here God calls Joshua to take on the responsibilities of Moses, to take on his mission. And when God calls him, he calls him to fight. Amen. He calls him to fight the battles of the Lord. Amen. Whenever God brings a shift, amen, we need to be ready to do our part. Amen. For some people, you might be up, up against some giants. You might be up against some real enemies. Amen. When God raised up King David, amen, he was fighting against the Philistines. When God raised up King Saul, God gave King Saul his responsibility. And he said, I, I have called you to save these people from the Philistines. He called them to do a work to help people. You've been chosen to impact people. You've been chosen to help people. You've been chosen to take on responsibilities in this life, in this world. Amen. God has called us to make a different difference and an impact. But this is the only problem is that when we come to the things of God and once we get hit, boom. Amen. You're out. You're just, you're just laid out. Amen. And sometimes we don't get back up. But I believe that if you're alive today, amen, we're not alive, amen, just to chill. We're not alive, amen, just to sit back. Your life doesn't even belong to you. You are the temple of God, amen. You've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Your life belongs to God, and God is calling you to fulfill your purpose, amen. And God calls us to a fight. When you get hit, you got to hit back. Boom. You got to keep hitting back. Amen. God has called us to fight. God has called us to fight. You get hit, you hit back. You get hit, you hit back. You get hit, you hit back. No matter how many times you get hit, we are called to fight back. Amen. God is calling us to finish this race just like Apostle Paul where he said, I have fought the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. I believe that there's many of you, amen, that you have experienced a loss, amen, and my heart breaks for you, amen, but God is bringing a shift, and he is calling you to rise up, he is calling you to make an impact, he is calling you to make a difference, amen, he is calling you to fight the good fight, amen, I know you've been getting hit, but fighters know how to hit and hit back, amen, this is the season that God is calling you to impact your generation, amen, and as you impact your generation, amen, the next generation shall be impacted. This is not a season to grow weary or weak, amen. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord. The way we become strong is when we are in the Lord. Some of you need to come back to the Lord. Some of you need to run to the Lord, amen. And the Bible says that he will increase your strength. That word strong means to increase in strength, amen. I want to encourage you today. God will give you power for your purpose, amen. God has a plan for your life to bless you to use you you have been set apart for the work of God amen you have been set apart for the work of God and I want to encourage you today amen is to trust God in this season amen to trust the Lord in this season because I believe that God shall surely come through for you that God will guide you. That God will give you revelation. That God will show you the places you need to be at. He's going to give you direction. Amen. He's going to give you guidance in this season. Amen. Because he is with you. But just like he told Joshua... He said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Amen. I want to encourage you today, be strong and courageous. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm looking for this worship song, is that I want to pray with you because I believe that God is going to supernaturally give you strength. Supernaturally, he's going to empower you 
because he has called you to do a great work for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, can, can you guys mute yourself? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. What's up, guys? And if you need prayer tonight, I just want to pray with you, amen? That God gives you strength for your purpose. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to breathe upon you. And Father, I just pray for every person right now, Lord, that has suffered loss, that is going through something, that, Father God, you're bringing me shift. And I pray that you encourage your people right now. Encourage. 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 Encourage your people, Father. In you, Father God, they will receive courage. 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 I pray, God, that you will make us strong and courageous for the shifts of life that you will make us aware that you are the God of purpose that you are the God of seasons and times and that you're calling us Father God not to miss a beat Father that Father God you have entrusted us with your people you have entrusted us with the mysteries of god you have entrusted us with the service you have entrusted us father to help your people father because you love them father god you have entrusted us father god to fight the battles of the lord you have entrusted us father god to take it to the next level father god you have called us to fight this fight to fight a good fight, Father God, that we may leave a legacy, that the next generation may be strong, Father. Make us bold as lions, Father God. Let us not die weak, Father God, but let us die as warriors in the battle, Father God. Let us glorify your name, Father God. I pray right now that you give your people power. Give them power. Give them power and I just receive it, amen. God is going to make you strong in this season. He's going to make you strong right now in Jesus' name. Come on, just receive it. Just, just pray. Just believe. Believe right now that he's breathing upon you. Come on, God is calling you. He's calling you to pick up your cross no matter how heavy it is and to follow Him, to run after Him, not to miss a beat, amen, to run, to run with the vision, amen. He's calling you to finish strong, amen. See, we can't get complacent in this season. If God has called you to do a work for Him, we need to go all out, amen. He's calling you to an enterprise. He's calling you to be his servant. He's calling you to be a high performer. He's calling you to produce. He's calling you to bear fruit that remains. He's calling you to leave a legacy. Strengthen us, Father God. Empower your people. Empower, 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 empower. He's giving you power right now. He's giving you power. He's giving you power. He's giving you power right now. You shall overcome. You shall overcome. You shall overcome. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're watching this video right now, just pray. Just connect with God. Connect with Him. He's going to give you new strength. He's doing a new thing. He will renew your strength. Thank you, Jesus. has chosen you he has chosen you to do a work for God it's time to rise up it's time to finish what God has called us to do amen well God bless you amen thank you for watching